G'day everyone, Tim from vMix here, and in this video today we're going to be talking about dynamic shortcuts. This was a new feature added in vMix 24 and is intended for advanced vMix users only. If you haven't used vMix shortcuts before or know what vMix is, then I'd recommend checking out our normal vMix shortcuts video linked in the description. Now this video might get more confusing before it gets less confusing, so there is a help guide in the description if you'd like to follow along step by step. Feel free to also pause this video at any point to add your shortcuts or maybe yell at the screen. So dynamic shortcuts allow you to change the value or input a shortcut uses with the press of a button. So for example, I could set up a row of buttons that would represent my inputs and then set a row of buttons for functions. So I could click on an input and then make it do something. Click on another input, make that do something. So it kind of reduces the number of buttons or keys needed to set up complex productions. With normal shortcuts, I need to create a specific key every time I want to create a shortcut function. So for example, if I had a production in vMix where I had eight inputs and I wanted to be able to create shortcuts to put all of those eight inputs into the four overlay channels, I would need to set up 32 different shortcuts. With dynamic shortcuts, I could set up a row for the eight inputs and then create keys for every function that I want to be applied to those inputs. So instead of needing 32 keys, I would only need 12 keys, eight keys for the inputs and four for the functions. You can also do this to assign dynamic values. As an example, you could set up keys for 25, 50% or 80% volume and then create a dynamic input to assign those to. You could also use it for something like set text. So you could set the text across multiple titles. So for most users, regular shortcuts will be the way to go. Uh, dynamic shortcuts are more useful in a scenario where you have a complex production and a lot of keys. Uh, they're also handy for setting up a controller in a more traditional manner if you are used to selecting the input and then a function. So how does it all work? First of all, we need to go to settings and then shortcuts. Then what we're going to do is add a new shortcut into the production here. Now, what I'm going to do is find the key first that I want for the function. So what I'm gonna do is click find and then I'm gonna use the O key just as an example for overlay channel one. So then I'm going to click OK. Now I need to then assign a function to it. So as I mentioned, I wanna overlay channel one here. Now for the input, I need to scroll up and I need to select dynamic one. Now you can use dynamic one across all of your dynamic shortcuts. It doesn't have to be one, two, three, or four. You can just use dynamic one. Very small occasions where you might need to use two, three, or four, but 99.9% .9 of the time, just use dynamic one. Now underneath that, you can give it a title, a description, just like you normally would, local shortcuts, that sort of thing, and click OK down the bottom. So now we have, if you see, I can press the O, nothing happens. Now, if you do have a shortcut like this set up previously, and there is a dynamic value saved in the preset, it, something may appear, um, but at the moment, there's nothing set up for the dynamic input. All right, so now we need to go to add, and we need to go to find. Now, what I'm going to do now is set the input. So I'm just going to use number one here and click OK. So I'm gonna set up these first couple of numbers here. Traditionally, how somebody might set up a controller or have a mixing board. So I'm then going to select the function and the function needs to be set dynamic input one. So the one here just needs to correspond with dynamic one that we selected in the first step. Okay, so now for the value, I just need to enter the input number. So as I mentioned before, I'm just gonna set up the first couple of numbers to match the corresponding input in my production. So as you can see down here, I have number one as camera. So I'm going to select uh, number one here. So that's going to be the input number and you just set it up how you normally would for your short cuts and then click okay. And let's just go okay again. Now for the moment of truth, let's see if that dynamic shortcut has worked. So first of all, what I wanna do is select my input. So I've set that to key number one here. So my first input, I'm gonna select it. And then I'm going to use the function key to overlay that input into overlay channel one. So I'm gonna press this O key now. As you can see, that has overlaid my first input 
into overlay channel one. And because I've set this up as a toggle function, I can just press O again to turn that off. So now I'm gonna show you how you can set up another input to use this function. So I'm just gonna go back into the shortcut section again. And then what I'm going to do is just duplicate it. Now you can create a new one if you wanted to, but cloning it's probably easier. And now I need to select my second key. So I'm gonna use key two here and click OK. Then for the value, I need to set what input I'm going to use. So I'm going to select input number two down here because I want this B's video to be able to be overlaid into overlay channel one. Then I'm going to click OK down the bottom and then OK again. So now in order to put that input into overlay channel one, I need to press number two and then press the O key again and that's going to overlay it into channel one. I can press O to toggle that off. Then I can go back to the first one, press one, then O, and as you can see, that's now overlaid. And then I could go to overlay, and now we have our B's video back again. As I showed you before, you can then go set up multiple function keys to apply across your different inputs as well. So narrowing down the amount of keys you need for a complex production. You can also use dynamic shortcuts to change values as well. For example, I can change the value of this particular title uh, by using a couple of keys. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and set that up. So I'm gonna go up into settings and then I'm going to go to shortcut. So for this type of dynamic shortcut, you'll need to have something that you can set a value to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add, I'm gonna find, and now I'm just going to use the Z key down here, click okay. And then for the function, I'm going to need something where I can set the value. So I'm gonna use set text here. As you can see here, I can now have a value down here. Now for the input, I'm going to select my Tim title here. And you, if you're using a text value, say, um, people use this across things like replay and that sort of thing. Um, I can make sure that I'm using the right text field here that I want to change. And for the value here, I need to set dynamic one. And then just set that up how you normally would. And so now we have the Z key that we can use for setting text. So now we need to set up those dynamic values. All right, so I'm gonna to go to add, Shortcut here, I'm gonna find it. Now I'm just gonna use the key next to it. So I'm just gonna go X for this one here. Now for the function, I need to go to set dynamic value. Set dynamic value. And because we selected dynamic one for the first one, we just need to do one here to correspond to it. Again, you can use that one across all of them if you like. Now for the value here, this is where we enter the actual value that's being changed. So I'm just going to change this to, um, let's change this to get a, like so, uh, and then click okay down the bottom and then click okay. So now if I go ahead and I press the X key and then press the Z key, which is what I've set up, it will change to get a. Now, if I wanted to then change that again, what I can do is go back up into the settings, shortcuts, and let's just clone this one here and we'll set up the next key along. We'll go to the C key here. Okay, and then we'll change this to um, Booyah. I click okay. So now we have this X and the C set up. So now if I press C and then the Z key, it will change to Booyah. X, Z, G'day, C, Z, Booyah. Um, so that's a way that you can apply values to different things, uh, different shortcuts that allow you to change the value in vMix. Okay, so that's dynamic shortcuts in vMix. As I mentioned, it's probably going to be best to go through the help guide step by step and do it a few times until you kind of get the hang of it. Uh, I know when Martin showed me this, I'm like, is this how it works? He's like, uh, I think so, yes. So. Um, just go through it step by step and you should be able to get it up and running in no time at all. And there's a few examples there of different ways that you could possibly use it. Now, if you do have any questions about this, definitely send us an email. Uh, you'll definitely get a shrug emoji with technical questions on this if you leave a YouTube comment. So definitely send us an email because yeah, it's gonna be impossible to do it via YouTube comments. Okay, so thanks for watching and we'll stream you later. Now that you've reached the end of this video, here are a couple of other things that might tickle your fancy. If you like to keep up to date with vMix videos, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. For a free 60-day trial of vMix Pro, head over to vMix.com.